Hi, my name is Chris McGilvery. I am the executive director for the Leaders Readers Network. I'm right here in Hart, Texas. Hart, Texas is a rural community in the Texas Panhandle who wants every child to be successful. At the Leaders Readers Network, we are on the mission to deepen the love of reading and the literacy journey of every student. Today I learned that this small rural community has their elementary school on the right side of me and their secondary school on the left side of me. It's this road that meets in the middle and I invite you to meet us here in Hart, Texas to support students and teachers as they deepen the love of reading for every student. What's unique about this community is that over 90% of children that live in Hart, Texas are bilingual. Yet, the school district and the classroom size is so small that they can't have access to bilingual funding. And so, the Leaders Readers Network is partnering with Hart ISD teachers and students to share a love of reading and providing bilingual books, and curriculum and resources to help deepen that love of reading for every student here. Listen to these stories, and I invite you to join us in supporting teachers and students here in Hart, Texas, so we can put literacy at the heart of every teacher and student in Hart, Texas. I think that education is important to me because that form I can have a good future, like mm, I can have good grades. Education is important to me so I can go to college and have a good future and be successful in life. Education is important to me because I feel like it is the key to success. Without education, a lot of things would not have been possible. It is helping me plan my future and um, striving for better things, including college. Bilingual books are important because it can increase your knowledge and bring more success. Important because that form you can learn to language or you can speak to language and read both. Bilingual books are good because now there's a lot of immigrants coming in for a better life, you know, to learn things here. And it makes it that much easier for those people that are bilingual. It's important to have bilingual books because even though you don't speak both languages, you can learn with a bilingual book if you're curious or if you need to learn a language. My name is Karen Wanyura. I'm a speech language pathologist for Heart ISD. So I actually had not heard of the Leaders Readers Network until I got in contact with a professor at WT, West Texas A&M University, regarding some literacy concerns that I have had um, for Heart ISD, specifically in the lower elementary grades. Um, our, we are a very low socioeconomic rural community. We, our kids don't have access to a public library and they really don't have access to bilingual literature because we're not a bilingual school. And so she told me all the awesome things that the Leaders Readers Network um, does and could possibly provide for our community, which was really important to both the kids and the parents here at heart. Um, I received an email from the district and my sister Daisy Hernandez is really good friends with Karen Barneda. And she just talked about the program and I thought this was a good opportunity. Um, if you come and meet our students, they don't have as much as other students have, and I think even books are something that's limited, and we don't have the funds to provide that. So I thought this was a good opportunity to build a classroom library. I didn't have one before. It's very important for my students and all the students here at Heart ISD to have access to bilingual literature um, because that is their culture. That is their community. So when we are offering them um, literature that doesn't engage them because when they read about the story they don't see anything about themselves in it. It's really hard to get them to have that passion and that love for reading that I think I as an adult have and how was that fostered in me as a child. 
So by providing literature to them in the context of their culture and in a language that they're familiar with, we hopefully can inspire future readers and lifelong readers. I think it's important for my students because it's something that they can identify with. The majority of our school is um, it's bilingual and I feel that they don't, they're not as exposed as other students, so they get that exposure through literature. It, it hits close to home. You know, Spanish was my first language and I think if maybe mom would have read books to me, that would have helped me even, you know, when you're learning English, that's, that's how that works. Um, the bilingual books will be helpful so that we would be able to have that reinforcement at home. Um, with it being in one, en one language, English, our parents will struggle with that. Um, about 97% of our population is gonna be ELL learners. And so that, or from Spanish speaking homes, I should say. Um, and so having those bilingual books will just open a lot more doors and opportunities for our kids at a younger age. And I think if they start young at becoming a reader and having that love for reading, it'll just carry on for a lifetime. Everybody knows the more you read your language, your vocabulary expands. Um, you know, some of our kids probably don't have real life experiences. You know, they don't travel a lot, they don't, but they can through a book. I, I like to tell them that the more they read, the more that they'll know, um, just because I think it's extremely important that they understand that reading is something that they're gonna be doing, you know, for the rest of their lives. Um, we've tried to start building a stronger reading foundation at our lower level groups and encouraging our families to get involved in that. And so um, I think that with us having such a large ELL population, it has been more of a challenge. Um, our parents aren't as able to read in English to our students. And so we've tried to offer a lot of reading nights and things to have skills for those parents to understand what's important for those students. Because we're in such a low socioeconomic area and community, there isn't a lot of emphasis for our kids sometimes at home on education, and so they're getting that at school. So we have to double down and do the best that we can as staff members, and we wanna show them that the language that they speak at home, there's nothing wrong with that. We can come into the education environment and we can support that um, culture and we can support that language here, that it doesn't have to be the difference between being at home and being at school that we can really, you know, um, sew those seams together and bridge that gap. I'm hoping that it will make our students be and our families have more family time um, to draw them closer together and let them see that um, having a strong reading foundation or any educational foundation, it's, it's a team effort from what's at home and what's at school. And I think we're going, going to extend what we're doing at school and allow that to continue at home when they're at home with their families at night. Honestly, building connections, even if it's parents building a connection with their student that they don't, because I realize um, a lot of our community, a lot of them work, both parents work, if we do have two parents in the home, and a lot of them are not English speaking. So if we send a Spanish book home, it's gonna be read. We're super excited about partnering and getting the books and getting these kids motivated. I feel that heart needed that. We need to get reading back in their hearts. That first, um, all the books ca um, came in and we numbered them out and I created a spreadsheet and my kids were wanting to check them out. My kids before didn't like to read and they were excited about reading the titles and wanting to read. Um, I have seen a couple of students have, have already gone through three books and we've had them for like three weeks maybe. So for high school kids, that's, that's awesome. I was excited, our kiddos need, need that help and I'm glad that you guys, um, I guess, picked us. Okay, so I think that this is lifelong. This isn't a kid that we see for two years and then they leave us. No, we keep up, we'll know. So if they start being successful now, it's just like uh, milestones, you know. We're gonna build, build, build. So we, we know, it's like we, we're investing. They're our investment because they're gonna, they're gonna be our future community you know, we want them to come back and we want them to come back very well prepared. I think that with us being in a rural community, um, a high poverty area, that a lot of times our students don't have the same opportunities as others. And so I would thank someone who is giving our students the same opportunities as students that come from larger communities or from even more affluent backgrounds. 
that our, our students you know, want to be on that same playing field with the other students. And so by someone, you know, investing in them, eventually they're going to go out and change the world with that. I can get behind any organization that provides opportunities for literature for kids, especially our bilingual learners. I think when you look at um, probably whatever the motto of the Leaders Readers Network and why it was formed, it was formed with a school like Heart in Mind, where we've got disadvantaged children who don't have the opportunities to do a lot of things that even disadvantaged kids in an urban setting do. So if the Leaders Readers Network is providing bilingual literature to kids like mine, I would support it all day long because we aren't going to teach our kids to look beyond the walls of their small communities and environments without showing them and, and encouraging them to um, embrace that literature.